What's up? It's Big J, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Smoking no Lexus, pull up with a Lexus. Coming direct, I ain't sending no message. We got some money, we trying to we flex. And selling no bundles, got tired of a nigga. All right, y'all, we got, well, we finally got Big J, never the little J, always never. Big J with us. Uh, off the uh, porch today, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling great, you know what I mean? Girl, I don't think you understand how long we've been waiting for your ass. Nah, I feel like I've been on y'all trail. I'm like, bro, everybody keep on seeing all these like ass people. On, I curse too. I just keep on seeing yeah, all these <laughs> people on the on here. Give me on here. Everybody on the porch. People ain't even off the porch. Y'all on the porch. Like all that. But yeah. <sighs> bro, when I when I first came across you, it was of course through Instagram with your freestyles, and I was like, this the one. Like the dad. This the one. This the one. And then you're from Texas too. Like. Right. This is the one. Okay. But yeah. I can't wait to dig into your story because I did get to hear a little bit about your journey. So we finna get into all of that. Right. I do want to start off with where you're from, which is Beaumont, Texas. Big Money, Texas. You already know what's going on. Yeah. Now, when I was younger, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I used to be on YouTube watching, like, you know. Beaumont Bros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, let me yeah. find. Did you use, let me find Girl, out? Girl, if you, you see me, you see me. If you notice me, you notice me. If oh, you don't, you, you don't. You in one of those? No. Okay, yes. But I used to watch that and I was like, God damn. Like, it was like y'all really used to link up. Like, that was like a sport. That's what, right. That's what I was trying to tell. I was trying to tell. Really trying to tell Ari that, like, no, I ain't doing it. Like, that's fun to me. That's not, it's not that deep, bro. Like, it is like a sport. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like everybody out there, like literally, what, are, what is everybody fighting for? Like only these two people got a problem, and like ten other people for the catch a pain. You you pulled up, you fighting. You came to join a team. It's a sport. We're fighting. Dang, can you count on your fingers like how many fights you've been in? No. <laughs> no. I don't know. Girl, I gotta think all the way back to goddamn uh. Like fifth grade, like it, uh, we been meeting at the park, like for real. I used to start off getting my ass beat though. For real? Hell yeah! Like I would like I ain't know how to I ain't know how to who the fuck just knows how to fight. So I really <laughs> had to get in the blender. Like I really was like I used to like black eye and couldn't like didn't really know what what happened. Like they had to tell me like what I did. But when a bitch started thinking, when I started knowing like when I because I think what it was was if I didn't want to fight you then I really wasn't on that. But if, a bit, if I wanted to fight you, you know, it just took one fight for me to bust a bitch ass, a, a bad ass motherfucker who ass I wasn't supposed to bust. I was like, oh, it's not fucking me. Like. <laughs> but I always did talk shit though, but you know. But Damn. on this like fifth, sixth grade or whatever. Mm -hmm. By the time a nigga hit eighth grade, high school, no. It was, it was like that for Yeah, real. we gon', I, like I ain't like, I'm not the one that's gonna be like, oh, I can beat up every bitch, but can't nobody beat me up. I'm gonna keep a bitch off of me. You gonna, it's gonna turn you go, bitch, you better be ready for a fight. I ain't the type to be like, I'll beat that bitch ass. Like, bitches always tell me I'll beat your ass. No, we're gonna fight long and hard, sweetie. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So if I literally get out there and fight you, I'm not, I'm not gonna stop till I throw up, bitch, you shouldn't have ever played. Like, so I saw this video, it was on TikTok, and this girl had like these super long nails. And she was talking about whenever you fight, you're supposed to put your thumbs like in right here and then you fold it like that. Is that the I correct way? I don't way? really know because I just started getting into the nails thing because my best friend do nails. So I ain't never used to have nails. So I'm bitch, 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 bitch. I'm uppercutting, bitch. I'm all way. I don't <laughs> got to hold my hand no kind of way. Like, what? Now I do. I'm trying to think of some new methods I can get a bitch. I, all I could think of was just like choking a bitch because my hand fucked up. Right? Ooh, now how are you handling that with you, you know, being. I don't even think about it. When I think about it, I get to tripping out about it. So I just don't even much think about it. All I be thinking is like, God knew. I be in certain predicaments. Now I'm like, could God knew. God knew what he, how he was gonna have to like, for me to continue like my journey and be probably successful, more humble and just like chilled. Cause like it's a sport from our city. So for me to come somewhere, it's like, yo, let me see what you hoes out here with. Yo, like, you know, we own it. But I'm like, nah, I'm just like, I really be watching what I'm saying and shit. Like, man, y'all was gonna beat me up and feel good. My head was up. <laughs> no, but um, what would you say were like some certain coping methods that you picked up so that you wouldn't have to take it there? Girl, we ain't watched since my hand fucked up. Oh, wait. Or just. I would say, as far as like, you know, letting your anger take you to where you finna line it up outside. 
It don't really be my anger. It be where I'm from. Bitches will play with you. It ain't even about me being mad because I don't want to fight you. I have nothing against you. But bitches will taunt you. So this ain't even about me letting my anger. This about literally you forcing me to fight you. Like, I ain't never been the type trying to fight somebody. Like, bitches be pressing me. So it's like, God damn, I give bitches all the time. Like, now nah, I'm good. I'm the type of bitch because I'm, now nah, I'm good. I don't want to fight y'all. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Cause, Cause if you really finna force me, we finna go down and it's, it's finna go down in this bitch. So I don't really got no, like don't, it's not to the point to where people just make me mad and oh, I wanna fight them. I'm yeah. just from somewhere where your ass is gonna fight. Especially if you just beat somebody else's ass. Oh, you got probably a bitch from the South End wanna fight you. Just because like, that hoe ain't got shit. Simply because of that, so. Well, yeah. there we go. Like, girl, the girls know. They right, know right. you're not one of them. Right. <laughs> Glass House, where we turn up at, where we, we go party at. Glass House is like a house on Glass House where it be a party. It's like its own after out club. After you go to the club, you go here. You go on Glass House, you go here and turn up. But I'm actually from Magnolia. Oh, okay. So with you being from Magnolia, what would you say were some things that it kind of instilled in you? I feel like I knew at an early age you couldn't trust a motherfucking nigga because I had this partner, we was so motherfucking cool, I thought, and this bitch ass nigga stole my mongoose bike. And I stole his bike back, right? <laughs> but the nigga that came told me, he was like, Lil D stole your bike. So I'm like, bitch ass nigga, I finna go steal that nigga bike. So I took, I didn't take his bike, I took his pegs because he loved his pegs. I took the pegs off his motherfucking bike. And the nigga went back and told the nigga, like, why would you tell him that I took the pegs? Not his man, mom at my house talking about some pegs. Like, this man stole my whole bike. I got it out your yard. So I knew like, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it be your own dogs. Like, nigga, I walk to the store with you every day, let you get off my mama's food stamp card, chips and the soda, and you gonna go tell the nigga I stole his pigs. After you told me he stole my wife. <laughs> and we fake cousins, nigga. Not the fake cousins. You know bro. everybody in the hood cousins. If your mama was cool, y'all was cousins. Exactly. Until them hoes feel like and they like, they ain't y'all real cousins, bitches. So, yeah. Man, that is, <laughs> so you said you learned not to trust early on. <laughs> yeah, like, y'all is wild as fuck. Whatever. So growing up, did you have a lot of friends or were you kind of to yourself? Hell no, I had what? I, I was friends with everybody. I had like girl groups and cliques and shit like that when I was in school. When we was in school, we used to do cliques. Like I had LTD, we fresh to death when we was in middle school. And then I had, uh, we had Pretty Girl Posse when I was in high school. It was like a group my mama had and she was just like, call, y'all, call them Pretty Girl Posse and just get all the cute girls. Oh, your mom? <laughs> yeah. Because I was always like that, like a leader type person. Like, I always uh -huh. knew I was going to do something. I just didn't know what. So it's like I always was like doing something. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. So all the girls was basically like, whatever you say goes. I ain't going to say, I ain't going to say like there was no hoes. Like, whatever I, I say uh, went. But mm -hmm. like, I started this group. This is my mom's group. Like, it's not a secret that this is my group. Right. So if anybody do something to me, then you're kicked out. So. And how would you describe your upbringing growing up? I feel like I had fun. Fun. Um, hmm. I don't really think I it was like I really was like that disciplined, but I don't feel like I was a bad kid to where my mom really had to tell me that. I really used to hold a crib down. My mom used to hustle and all kind of other shit or whatever. So I really I feel like we had fun. Like the main thing is like we always together. Like I knew people that got separated. I had to stay with their grandmas and all that. Like all my mama kids, like we stayed together. Like we was all in one house. What would you say was like the craziest thing that you've experienced growing up um, that you can talk about? We made CNN when I was like nine. Our house got shot up. Like 16, uh, 16, 16 rounds, like bullet holes in my little sister bed, my bed, my brother's bunk bed, like split the woods, crack down, boom, like me just hearing everything, like downtime, hearing my stepdaddy, like screaming my mama name, saying the cops, the cops, but they used to sell drugs, so you know, my mama think they getting busted, so my mama trying to get the drugs in, put the drugs in the toilet, but then she started hearing, like they trying to get in. They trying to beat on the door and get in. And my stepdaddy, he got his feet against the door and I let him in. And um, all I can remember is I'm hinged. I was so child, I was such a kid that I thought that it was my partner throwing shit at my window. I, I didn't know somebody was shooting at us. You know what I'm saying? I'm ticking every motherfucking beat too, every motherfucking shot or whatever. But I remember my mama come turn my light on. Her eyes was big as fuck. You could tell she just woke up like this, the biggest eyes I ever seen. And she put up, she, turned the light on that quick and like instant she dropped down, boom, get down. And I can hear my brother, like she got my little, she, she, it's my sister now. She got my, it was, she got him like, I don't even know what the, she got him or whatever. And she just holding him or whatever. And he crying, my little sister never wake up. 
the whole time, and I'm just like jumping at every beat, like, huh, what the oh, so fuck you, is going you didn't on? Know what, what the fuck was going on? You know, then out there happening is all these people out here, niggas, cameras out here, motherfucking. Cause to the, the T was, how is it? Is bullet holes in these kids' pillows, in their beds, in their mattresses? How the fuck nobody got shot? Nobody got shot. Nobody got shot. So I knew from that point, like, cuz my mama is covered in the bitch. Cause this nigga really ain't right like that. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna say you ain't blessed, but nigga, you be coming with a lot of bad karma. You know what I'm saying? And shit like that. And like, it's like nobody got shot. Like, I already knew, like, like, damn, my mama got some. Like, none of your kids got, how nobody got shot? And you it? said they shot like 16 times? Yeah, it was it was 16. They, they, they let out 16 rounds or some shit like that. The, the number is 16. So either they found 16 bullet holes or they let off 16 rounds. But either way it go, when he ain't let them in, they just like ran off like pop, 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 just shooting. And at the front of the house, there's the front window, that's me and my little sister room. Wow. So yeah, that was the craziest shit. I'm like, niggas busting at us? Like, that's when I found out like, are you hoes selling drugs and shit? Y'all got hoes and shit? Y'all, y'all weird, I thought y'all had a job and shit. Like this when I found out like, I went to school and the nigga was like, I know why your house got shot up. I'm like, why he like, your mom and daddy sell drugs, man. I must have beat his ass in the restroom. Like, they don't sell, he said sell crack. They don't sell crack like crack? Like, my people don't sell no motherfucking crack. You know, well, shit. When you were younger, did it ever come to your suspicion, like, what is y'all doing? Or they kind of hid it from y'all? Nah, we was, I was young, so if I go in the kitchen and you do, I'm like, what you, what y'all doing? You know, they have a sheet. They have a sheet up so we can't see or whatever. And I'm the type of person, I'm coming behind that sheet. <laughs> I don't know why you put a sheet up, but I'm right. trying to think how I can hit that sheet. So I finally hit the dining room to come this way on that bitch ass. And I'm up and I'm like, what's that? My dad like, this is a science project. I'm helping your brother with you, you know what I'm saying? I just got, I, that's all I can remember is I held on to a science project. Like, I don't know what that, what, why, but I held on to that until I found out. Then like, my, my, my stepdad had always come like, once it got to the point, I guess we peeped the game on what's going on. Mm -hmm. Cause now CPS getting involved, all that. Niggas start coming, take the mic away. Like, so you ain't doing the science projects at the crib no more. <laughs> you gonna come take our microwave and do the projects over there. Oh okay. my God. What would you say were some like strong morals and principles that were instilled in you very early on? Like to clean, to be clean. I feel like for sure to be clean, like, and get money. Like that's, that's, like, that's all I knew. Like stay clean, get money. Stay clean, get money. Clean this room, y'all better clean this room, y'all better woo woo. But then I'm seeing y'all were not, not some money. So all I'm knowing is keep the crib clean, keep the house clean. I'm trying to do everything I can to get it, try to get a dollar. Like, nigga, like I cleaned the yard, like I washed the dish, like I'm, I'm trying to add my shit up. Like, what? Well, I'm saving my money trying to go get shoes or whatever. So I'm like, I used to be like, can I earn, like, I'm trying to earn some money or whatever. So, like, yeah, being clean and get money. Now, when you were old enough to work, what would you say was like your first job? Well, I really had snuck and got a job my mama didn't know. My <laughs> brothers used to uh, sell newspapers on Sundays. Uh -huh. And you had to be, you had to be 13. You had to be 13 and I was like 11. So I had lied and told the coach that I was 13 or whatever. And he started letting me sell newspapers or whatever. And shit, I started selling them hoes. And then my mama like found out like, she was mad as hell like, what the fuck, nigga? She on 11, like she standing on the corner at six o'clock in the morning, it still be dark. She out there with newspapers. I'm like, she, she thinking like my brother's making so much money. Like that's how you, she, she thinking they making so much money. They buying me shoes and all that. Like, girl, this is, I'm getting my own shit. My <laughs> brother, my brother them really not doing shit. They getting their money going by chips in the store to post it up at the store trying to sneak and smoke. Nigga, I'm out here all day. Like, coach, like you ready to go fucking? I'm trying to get the max amount we can get at this bitch. Whatever, so, and I was a girl that was giving me extra money and shit. I always had the most money. <laughs> yeah, she got on my ass, but then she finally let me do it when I told her why. She like, why you got a job? Do I want to buy my own shoes? You feel me? Like, you buying myself and you picking my stuff. That shit is ugly as hell. Okay, so you was making some money selling them newspapers to be buying some shoes. Like, not that much enough for a pair of shoes. And you got to think this is every Sunday, so I could buy a pair of shoes every Sunday. I'm out here all day for a pair of shoes. On, out, so on Monday, I'm going to get the most. <laughs> and then my brother used to steal, so half the time he'll get steal them hoes and run out the mall and I'll keep my money and don't tell my mama. So. so that leads me to ask you, at what age would you say you officially jumped off the porch? I feel like to me, when, when, I, when I look at jump off the porch, I look at it like, like you out there in that water without your people, without your parents, without, mm -hmm. without no help. And 
I ain't, I ain't, they, they wouldn't, like, my mama was, she rocking, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I ain't jump off to 18 till I moved out her crib. Like, I'm in the streets now, like, I'm in the lanes and shit. I'm fucking with this old nigga, we, mm -hmm. we doing this, we doing that. Like, my mama not dictating nothing, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, I feel like at 18, at an appropriate age, when you get out of high school, you start feeling yourself. But how long I been getting my own money and taking care of myself since I could fucking get a dollar. But I still always lived with my mama. Like, she still was the woman in her house, like, she, like, that's who I looked at the cook, that's who bitch, yeah, I know you paying the bills too, so, you know, but I feel like, to me, jumped off the porch is like, you don't, you got your own crib, you don't live with nobody, you take care of yourself. Like, people be talking about they jumped off the porch, still be staying with their mama. Like, <laughs> you, you definitely still on the porch. Like, now, you know, with you having getting money, like, for so long and just, like, working and stuff like that, when you got to the age of 18, would you say it was easier for you to navigate with your independence? I feel like for me, like, um, I feel like getting money early helped me know how to be able to save. Like, I'm the best saver that I know. Like, I save better than my mama. She would literally have $3,000 and spend $2,800. Like, what the fuck? You got 200 left? Like, you weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Okay, like, you need to get put us on some game because I suck at saving money. But it's just like, not until you start saving, you just feel good. To, and I'm a shit talker, so it's just like, what up? Like, I literally, I can eat noodles every day, McDonald's every day, every day, but I, I got money. Like, y'all are doing it at the end of the week. I got more money than everybody. So what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, bro, like, at the end of the day, who the fuck don't want that money? It's, it's, I don't know, but I, I was saving early, though. That's, that's probably why. But nobody around me knows how to save, like, at fucking all. They, like, even fucking spends my shit, like. Oh, man. Right. So I know you have your daughter, so I know she probably got the saving. Like, her broke just... ass don't know how to save. <laughs> her broke ass does not know how to she save. Put, look, she got the, the drip from you. She like, got she the shoe habit from you. What's going on? She be saying, you literally can just, like, no the fuck I can't. She, I know you can afford Chick-fil-A like, afford. Oh, you know, kids be so manipulative. Like, they will mess with. They don't do nothing but piss me off. If you understand <laughs> that I can afford something, then you do understand that we just spent this much money. So for you to even be asking for something is just like weird, weird, very weird. Okay, so your love for music, when exactly did that come about for you? I feel like uh, my mama used to be doing music and shit when I was younger, I used to follow her around. And like really for me, like it was, like it's my mama, yeah, you know, but my mama had a little brother that got ended up getting shot in the head when I was in sixth grade across the street from our house. And that nigga was so hard. He was like a, he was like a fucking Eminem, a fucking bust around. It's like this nigga, like them niggas not even fucking with that nigga. Like that nigga was so hard. And we used to literally, now that I'm old, I know him, he on you know, cocaine. That's why he was up all night. But we were freestyling all, we used to freestyle all fucking night. And this nigga was just so fucking hard and shit. So it was just like, I'm like, I'm fucking with that. Like he throwed in the bitch. Like I thought my uncle was so throw for knowing how to rap. So I'm like, then my mama, like she just, she come in and she do her shit. Obviously naturally, I'm gonna want to be just like my mama and shit, so I feel like I already, like all my mama kids, we all used to be putting on talent shows and shit for my mama, showing my mama and shit, but it's just like, as I got older, I'm the one that like really took it serious and started sticking with it, but I feel like, shit, I really just started loving it, like, when I just really got into it, like I could tell, like that's something that my mama really, like if she wouldn't have had four kids, I feel like she would've went so hard at that, I feel like that's one of her biggest regrets and shit, so it's like, oh, I'm gonna go get that for you, like I'm gonna go get that for you for sure, like, fuck all that. And I was watching one of your interviews, and I love the story when you told, when you talked about how you did have to go uh, to jail, and you talked about how you realized you was the only person saying nigga in the jail that you were well, at. Well, I figured out how much I say nigga uh -huh. when I was in jail. Like everything, like I, uh, I like when I first got trans uh, transferred, I was the only black girl in there until I got there. Okay, let me rephrase it. I got there my first day to. Mimi was in that bitch, that's Cuban dog's sister. I found that out in jail. I'm in there with her. We get into it with some, some white hoes, finna scratch them hoes, they separate us, boom. The remainder of my time, I'm the only fucking black person. You feel me? Mimi end up getting chained and getting seen, so that she's telling, telling me, take your time, do your time, so you can be done. I'm like, bitch, I ain't taking no time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you tripping, like, what bitch, like, you already been there like three months, you might as well take the time. Bitch, I'm doing whatever to get out the war. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was the only black girl, so it's like, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, I found out like, God damn, I even found out like in my music, like, fuck, what's another word I could say for nigga? Like, everything is nigga. Like, when I'm, a, when I'm talking about a man, I'm saying nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I say nigga a lot. Yeah. Now, when did you realize things were really taking off for you as an artist? I feel like um, 
when I first when I first uh, got out, like while I was in jail, B King had my page and he he was telling me different people that's hit me up and shit like that. So I was already in jail, all fired up and shit. Man, I came home like before I went to jail, I barely used to get a thousand likes. Nigga, I get out and post the first day picture. I got four thousand likes. I'm like, oh, what y'all did to my page? Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> Which I did to my page, so I was like, okay, but it still wasn't, it was just like more so like, oh, I'm, a, I'm this popular ass bitch, like more popular than what I was, but like, when RPM dropped, everybody was like hitting me up, like everybody like, look, when the baby come in on my shit, like eating with the five signs, I was like, oh, we, uh, that was my, that's my biggest problem, like, I know all these rappers and they don't even know I fucking exist, not like motherfuckers knowing what's up, like, yeah, when they fan base connect, y'all already know what it's giving me. And go chill with y'all kids or something. But like, it's like, I'm like, oh, it's up. Like, motherfuckers in the industry starting to know who I am, and I'm from somewhere mm -hmm. with nobody's industry. We don't have nobody to like, everything I'm doing, I'm, fi I'm figuring out shit for my label. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have nobody to look to when it comes to this shit. So it was like, just certain artists that I feel like big, knowing, knowing that I exist, just turn me little up. Like, oh, all right, this shit for real. And that's what I want to ask you. Coming out of Beaumont, what did your grind look like as an emerging artist? And we didn't know what to do. We was just dropping shit. We was just doing shit. We didn't know what to do. But I feel like for me, when I turned up, like when I, how I got signed and this and that, it's like, I was a hairstylist and I was super fucking embarrassed that that's how I'm getting my money. But I'm like this throwed ass rapper to people. So it's just always be little side comments and shit like that. Cause I'm doing hair sun up to sun down. Like, uh, it's, you know, in this bitch or whatever. So like, I hated that though. Like, I don't want to do no hair, bro. I don't, I don't like doing hair. So that was something that fucked with me. You know what I'm saying? And my partner Tizo, he was like, you need to shoot a video rapping and doing them hoes here in the kitchen like you be doing, nigga. Like, there's some shit you embarrassed of, but nigga, bitches is doing here in the kitchen. There's some relatable shit, like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just, like, ain't that you really, you get money off of it, bro, chill. It's not that deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, so when I did that, I seen people just really fucking with it, and that's what made me be like, really me just, people take to who the fuck I really am and shit like that, so. So how long would you say it really took for you to get a buzz even outside your city? I don't know, shit. I've been rapping for four years, so, and that shit feel like 20. So it's just like, I don't know, cause I still feel like, like as far as Houston, Houston went, I feel like I immediately got a buzz from Houston cause I had B King to piggyback off of. And he just reposted my shit all the time and just taking me to clubs and shit like that. So it was just like a immediate like, oh, Houston fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? So. What would you say was like a really big risk that you had to take with your career? I feel like it's really when, when you stuck in your ways and you got this little fan base, because it's like, okay, realistically speaking, the fan base that I have is not fucking on the fan base that we're going to eventually get. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But when you do have them, you want to like cater to them and shit. So I feel like it was just like super risky when I started doing sexier shit. Like I'm reading the comments, my fans saying like, oh, come here. It's like my fans is not feeling this. They like, what the fuck, bitch? You know, <laughs> come on, don't do it. It's like that. You a breath of fresh air. Like I seen a comment, uh, somebody say, bro, you a breath of fresh air. Don't do that. Don't do it. It's like that. Bro, literally had to put my phone down because I was going to tell you that. Like you are literally a breath of fresh air. Thank you. I don't ever want you to change this shit, but I know as an artist and me being a consumer is kind of unrealistic because, you know, you have to grow. But yours. That's what I'm saying. I won't, I don't want to change, but I do want to grow. Right. I'm gonna always be me, but I do want to. I do want to feed. A, a, I don't want to just be in a box. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it wouldn't be far fetched for me to be sexy because I do like niggas. I wear lingerie right for my niggas. I do get. I do get fucking sexy, but I just feel like that it needs to be displayed in a way that is still me. Mm hmm So. Have you ever felt pressure with that from like going back and forth from like? your normal style, then switching it up to the sexy style? No, I feel like I got, I, I feel like I really signed to a label who really fuck with the fact that I'm not like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. If they see that I try to steer to that way, they like, you don't gotta, they, it's, it's not that, baby. You don't gotta do that, you know, chill out. You know, so. That's a, God got you. That's a blessing. That is such a blessing that you don't have to compromise, like, you know, what you stand for in order to be where you are now. Yeah. I'm sorry for the awkward pause. No, you're staring at me, what's up? <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. But like, oh. like I said, 
literally like you are such a breath of fresh air like when i first heard you i was like nah like she got it the way you came in even like your single press like i watched that music video and i saw you was with um o and b bloodbath yeah right and i was like these two right here like right. yes this is too perfect you just different bro you different thank you you are different I don't want you to change on the stuff, but like I said, you know, you gotta go, whatever, but you know. So I do want to ask you, like coming up, and how was your transition going from an independent artist to now being a signed artist? I feel like I like it because it allowed me to be able to like know what I could do. And it's like, it's like teaching me stuff. I don't know what the hell going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, like, I know right from wrong, but when it comes with this, I don't really know. Like, I feel like it's just like, I'm just, I'm down for like to try all kind of different shit. I'm just like, I'm down with the shit, I'm with the shits. So I like that I got like a lot of different people I can call and harass, you know? <laughs> like all this shit just be in your head. Now you got a person like for that, you call that person. For that, you call that person. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like that's cool as hell. And all these people really trying to like, really trying to like put, push me to, you know, the, the blowing shit, so. Now, when it comes to purpose, do you feel like you have found your purpose with the music or do you feel like it's beyond that? I feel like um, it's beyond that, but like, obviously right now that's what's going on. But like, I didn't think I was gonna be a rapper. I thought I was gonna be a fucking comedian. I used to do stand-up comedy in high school. Did and you really? Shit. Yes, I did. Like, so, yeah. It was like, I was like, I'm gonna be this fresh ass motherfucking comedian. Ain't nobody gonna be fresh like me. I'm gonna be fresh to a bitch on stage telling jokes. Like, that's just how I thought I was gonna be. Like, I used to do all the UIL shit, all the little acting skits and shit like that. And then like, but that's just like, just like with the rapping shit, that's just unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, to even like, how do you even go about trying to do that? But that's, girl, that's what I had in my head. Wow. And I do want to ask you, you know, we talked earlier about how you incorporate your daughter when it comes to your artistry. So just talk to us about that. Um, I feel like once I, once I fin seen uh, RPM and I seen how people took to it, me just really being myself and being relatable, I was like, okay, a lot of people, like I, I done been around women like once they kids start getting of age, they really don't like to like to present their child because it like tells their age or some shit. Like just I done heard a lot of different weird stuff. So it's like for me, like bro, my daughter is a big part of like like everything that's going on. Just like this, this what we doing? Like this 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 was going on. So like it was like okay, I feel like I got a recipe now. So it was like shit, like showing people what I do. Like nigga, I'm a mama. I sit on the porch, drink my shit, chill, calm my daughter out, you know, or whatever. So. Like, uh, let's just shoot a video like that. I think we think it too hard. And it looked like, to me, that the people on my page is like, less is more when it come to me. Like, we don't even got to do all that. Mm -hmm. We can spend all this money on that shit. That shit don't even move a needle. And then I fucking sit in the car with a fucking rag on my head, looking like a damn bum and break that hoe. And it's like, oh, we love her. She's real. You know, <laughs> so it's like, y'all want me to look ugly as hell? What's going on? Now, Jade, where do you feel like you make the best music? In my car. Sitting in my car. Sitting in my car. You know, a lot of, not a lot of people, I don't want to say a lot of people, but it's the freestyles in the car. You're, the, I've heard somebody else came and they talked about how when it's just in the car, like they just got like a peace of mind in there and they could just go crazy. Is that like the same case for you? Yeah, I don't know. There's just some like, like it just started off like that for me because like I was staying with my mom at a point in time when I had gotten in legal trouble. So now I'm like starting to rap and shit and like, you know, I don't wanna be rapping like it's a house full of people and shit. Like I'm gonna go sit in the car, get some privacy. So, and just like, I just start getting used to like, used to that vibe or whatever. What advice would you say that you received early on that you still like keep with you even in your career as an artist? I feel like I didn't have, I didn't have too many people to try to like, give me any advice like most of the advice that i got was like i should not even take that advice type of shit. but obviously people don't always like stay true to yourself but i feel like this to me in my career on what's going on it is early on right now for me like right now is the early on so i feel like one of my partners just told me like ebody he was like um you know jade you gotta because i stress a lot of being in my own head and argue with motherfuckers like you gotta stop chasing people that don't want to be there and 
and fuck with the people that want to be a part of your shit. You know what I'm saying? You you think like when you have all this going on, let your mama, your brother, your cousin, you know what I'm saying? Your best friend and all this is going to be the people that's going to break their neck for you. And God might say otherwise. So you got to stop chasing them because you you feel like, oh, because y'all can or whatever this is, that they going to go hard for you. Like, it's people so, like it's people that want to go hard for you. Let them go hard for you and get all them other people out the way. So That's some good. That's some solid. That's some solid gems right there. Right. Shout out to Ebody. <laughs> Now you have dropped two uh, two projects, or is that EPs projects? Two projects. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah one a project, another was a mixtape. So when we getting a new album, we work we working on some shit right now. We got we you know it's we definitely finna pop out with something. We just um we just I just want everything to be built, and I feel like my whole team do too. Like we don't want to be we want to you know what I'm saying we want to grow. You know what I'm saying we want to. You know, so I feel like that's what that's the process that I'm in right now, like making the album. But we not gonna rush it. We ain't gonna rush it. So sure. What would you say about this upcoming project is gonna be different from the past ones that you've dropped? Not being rushed, cause I'ma just get in that hole and I'ma uh, uh, I'm be like, here you go, we, this, this fire. Nigga, the first <laughs> ten songs I do is the ten songs I ain't never. The first ten songs that I've on two on the three projects I ever made. The first song, however many number of songs y'all wanted me to do, how, the first ones that I did, they be what it is. Like this time, it's like, well, I went to the back to the drum boy, then went back to the drum boy, went back to the drum boy, and it's like, I'm, I'm not mad at it though, cause it's like, shit. If the problem is it need to be better, then I'm down with that. Like it, it cannot. Who the fuck don't want it to be better? You know, so. I'm not gonna argue with a motherfucker saying it needs to be better. Say no more. <laughs> come back in there. We just gonna try to get it going. Oh, now, do you have any pressure on you with this new project? I feel like I do because like a lot of people don't understand the process, and I'm just learning the process. So it's like I announced signing like a year and a half ago. My city, like, bitch, what you doing? What we gonna do? You in high demand right now. I ain't gonna lie. Like right. we trying to figure out. When this project coming, how Man, you we coming finna, up? We, we finna, like, I already know we finna fuck it up. Like, it's all good. <laughs> now, you dropped a single in April called Lower. So, talk to us about that. Lower, I feel like, Lower is something I feel like it wasn't too fucking far-fetched for, for how I am or mm -hmm. whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I really like how the, um, how the fucking video was set up, how it was presented to me. I feel like I didn't even, what I like about it is that I feel like I didn't tell my project manager this is what I want to do. I feel like I don't know what made her feel like I can act out those different roles, but she knew and I was fired the fuck up about it. Like, hell yeah, I'm about to get in that hole. I'm about to be everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that was that. I was like, she had me going with that shit. I'm like, every video I'm going to be a movie, she like, chill. You know oh, <laughs> chill, bro, chill. Not chill. Up, chill, chill. Hey, I did going. watch the video and I was like, okay, so this is how you come in, like. Right, but the right. them girls video with Erica Banks and B King, right? That was so Texas. Like yeah, I posted that on my story. I was like, this is the one. Like that was this a cool. Is that was a fun video. That was cool. They had all that shit out there, all that equipment. I'm like, damn, what you not moving? This bitch is up. My friends out there. I was like, I'm on. Fuck y'all talking about. Now I do want to talk about your first project that you dropped was the BSBBJ. Big Smoke Behind Big J? Yes. Okay, I was gonna ask you what that stood for. Big Smoke Behind Big J. Big Smoke Behind Big J. So that project, what did that project mean to you at that time? That project was created while I was in jail. I wasn't even never working on the project. I had just met B King and he was feeding me beats. So I was just like sending the beat back, beats back fast as fuck, just sending them back. And then like when I ended up going to jail, he ended up like doing all that shit, making creating a project and like dropping it. But shit, I ain't uh, I ain't here till I got out seven months later. Wow. And I was hearing it, and I was like, damn, this shit hard. Like, damn, this shit crazy. One of them, I was like, damn, cause I'm screaming on there. I put that one on there. <laughs> Another one was just like a freaked out ass song. I was like, oh my god, why we even? I thought we was just gonna be leave that behind. You know, but I was I was happy about it. I was I was proud. It was just still holding me down and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like obviously I'm hearing shit through the jail phone, but it ain't it sounded distorted. It ain't really. I'm like, cause I don't even want to hear that more, cause I know that ain't how it sound right there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all right. tripping, but my daddy was like, this shit hard, nigga. Like I'm calling everybody. Like I call my daddy. He give me like five numbers to call. Like call these people. Like they left their number to my call and whatever. I was on the phone for like three hours when that shit dropped. Everybody, everybody just like talking about it and shit. Then my daughter was on the album cover. And holding a yep. sign saying free Big J. So I was like, damn, they got my daughter on it. So they ended up sending me a picture while I was in jail of the 
other thing and then a track list or whatever. I had like a feature from Juicy Fruit on that bitch. I was like, oh, okay, all right, this lit. Um, I was just looking at my daughter. I'm like, who put this fucking doodle ball in her hair? That's the only thing fucking pissed me off, man. My daughter gonna, she wear puff balls. And I'm um, looking at this picture. She like, I'm like, yeah, my girl don't like her hair. The fuck y'all got going on? Like somebody twisted that bitch tight. She had a little lemon head on that picture. I'm like, <laughs> the hell? Now in this moment, just with all of the success that you've had in the cosigns, how do you feel? I feel like obviously like I want more. I'm not the type of person that's feel. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm very uncomfortable in the, in, in the, in the part that I'm in. Like, you, you know, everybody say good shit about it or whatever, but like, bruh, I'm super uncomfortable. Cause like, nah, we gotta, it gotta, it gotta be here. So I ain't feeling like, oh, you know, I'm feeling like, nah, nigga, we gotta step it up. We gotta, we, we still got, we got a lot of work to do. This is literally, even though I've been doing this for four years, this spot where I'm at right here, I'm like, okay, this the beginning right here. This the beginning of, of the shit. And what advice would you give to the younger girls who may be looking up to you? Shit, don't do not do what I do. Do, do your own thing, because I'm not, I'm not like the best example. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make mistakes and shit like this. So don't look at me and say, oh, oh, I got to do this. Like maybe on like an interview two years ago or last year, I'm going to have a blunt and I'm going to be smoking a blunt and all that. And like now, present day today, I'm not feeling it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I do smoke, but I'm not going to present that like this. So I feel like when you're looking at an artist, like, don't, don't, I, I'm still growing as a woman, so don't, don't, don't look at shit that I do and feel like it's cool, cause shit, I might do something this week that I don't feel like cool next week. You know what I'm saying? So I really just always do what the fuck you feel right in. You know what I'm saying? Decide what type of woman you wanna be and what type of artist you wanna be, and then you take them necessary steps to do that. Cause, yeah, yeah, don't, don't, you know, don't be looking at other people's shit feeling like, you know, oh, that's cool, I'm gonna do that cause that's cool, like, you know. Period. Yeah. All right, before we wrap up, you got any last words or shout out? No, I'm just happy to be at this bitch. Shout out to you, because I feel like this was very interesting. You was asking some good questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. We love you. You're always welcome. We dropped that project. We need you back on the porch. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Smoking no Lexus, pull up with a Lexus. Lexus. Coming direct, I ain't sending no message. We got some money, we turned and we flexing. Selling no bundles, got tired of finessing. Ayy, nigga on my line, like.